I'm your host for the most local 23. You're joining me for Royal Masquerade Chapter 9, A House Divided. Hey, A stunned silence hangs in the room. Everyone looks at Zaya, who has just admitted that Renza is blackmailing her. Blackmail? That's... Well, I'm not surprised Renza would do such a thing. A truly vile woman. I'm upset I even complimented her dress. Aunt Zaya, you're more stubborn than an ox. What could Renza possibly have over you? If you tell us, we could maybe help. We are far beyond the point of help. I have to keep my promise, or face the consequences. To put your delusions of grandeur behind you, House Rosario announces its support for Queen Renza, Fiero, tomorrow. Zaya stands up from her seat and then walks out of the room. Hunter and Caden step in shortly after. And as Zaya swearing on her way out proceeds good news. I'm going to run for the throne. I stand corrected. Julia, that's... Bold. Too bold, according to Zaya. She won't support me as head of House Rosario because Rinza's blackmailing her. I can't believe someone would do such a terrible thing to Zaya. Honestly, blackmail. Blackmail. Rinza will pay for what she's doing to my aunt. Our house will not bend to her will. Aunt Elise, Zaya said you were there when Rinza blackmailed her. Anything you could tell us about the night would be uh, helpful. While dining, Rinza gestured at a still life of an apple. I thought it's an unimaginative form that what Zaya struck Zaya with fear. Hold on. I saw that painting in Renzo's room. That could be the key. Hunter, can you get us into the Ferrero estate? It would be easier if Renzo is not present. It's my home, but my sudden return will draw her suspicions. Luckily, tomorrow is the uh, Beltane Festival, a celebration that I'm sure is to draw her out. Beltane? I've read about that. It's a wonderful festival where everyone joins together to celebrate the upcoming harvest. And love. Indeed, the noble classes traditionally dress themselves in garments of common folk, so you can't tell them even apart. Until they open their mouths. So we wait until Renzo leaves for Beltane. What do we do in the meantime? Perhaps we could help ourselves to some of what a festival has to offer. It would make our presence near the Pharaoh estate less conspicuous. Well, then let's enjoy ourselves before we strike back at Renza. The next night, Hunter arrives for the Beltane Festival. Vasco admits him into the foyer. Hunter! You look so festive. Like royalty, even in the vest. I guess we'll go with festive, since it's for poor people. Isn't that nice? The rich people come off their thrones, celebrate with the poor people. Ain't that cute? It'd be a shame to show up to a festival without festive attire. It's a look good. It looks good on you. A comforting thought coming from you. The second person enters the foyer. Looking over, you see Caden. <clears throat> oh, my. What are you looking at? Caden, you dressed up for something. <laughs> Look adorable. Adorable is not the word I used. It's the one I can and will. Annalisa pokes her head over the staircase railing above you. Hunter, Caden, please refrain from delaying my sister further. She must prepare for the festival. Mm. Wow. Could you push that any more towards showing the... Nipples. Seriously. And Elisa, you look beautiful. Like, I'm I'm legit. We're like right there. It's, oh my god. Why thank you. You will receive the same beauty treatment once Caden moves his festive self out of the way. Caden chuckles as he and Hunter take a seat. You head upstairs to meet Annalisa. 
Under and Caden have given you your first taste of Beltane, and there's so much more to come. I've seen the fires from the Liberty or Library. It's a ritual meant to celebrate summer and the growth of crops and herds. Yes, I'm sure you've read all about it. The eating, the drinking, dancing, the Mayflowers, so on. None of those words capture the magic of the festival. The smiles, the laughter, the romance. You don't mean the Beltane kids. The one and only. Whoever exchanges kisses tonight will be favored with a fruitful relationship. It's practically the main event. Well, at least it will be for you, dear sister. My main event? I was afraid you were going to say that. Don't fear it. Embrace it. More specifically, embrace Hunter, because that's who you're kissing tonight. Maybe I want to kiss the wall. To the best experience, that magical, heart-pounding moment, you will want to look the part. <clears throat> she hands you a ruffled, off-shoulders shirt, an embroidered dress, and a ruby necklace. Apparently, we are already dressing like a commoner. I don't know. Seriously, let's look at this. Yeah, that's more commoner than this. I'm just saying. How does it look? Like a garland goddess hunter, won't be able to resist you. Now, before we depart for Beltane, there is one more thing you must see. And Lisa leads you through your state to the grounds behind, where you find the makings of a grand carnival. Where did we get all this? Noble houses are supposed to house an event during the social season. Vasco has been overseeing this since before the masquerade. Though all the nobles know about it. They do. I'll relish the look on their faces when you use our carnival to announce your bid to become queen. Enraged rivals, cute and exotic animals. We have a lot to look forward to after Beltane. You look over the animals and their pins, the pandas nibble on bamboo, emus peck at the fence, and a tiger playfully swats with Star Fox. <laughs> We're building towards something special. That we are. <clears throat> House Rosaria looks stronger than ever. I don't know what Zaya's thinking. We're going to win. Hunter and Caden walk up to you and Annalisa and both stop when you see them. Julia, you look gorgeous. You, you will be the most beautiful person at the whole festival. That's not what we're going for because that draws attention, dum-dum. I've yet to witness the pot wonders of Beltane. Perhaps someone dares to look better than I. There is only one way to find out. Beltane awaits. You arrive at one of the city squares where the festival is taking place. It's a swirling mass of ribbons, tents, people drinking and dancing in the street. This is much different up close. I've never seen a stall full of metal work before. Did you see the design on those cups? Anything less and it would be one of the city's favorite festivals. Looking around, you see a group of guards walk up to Caden. Chief. No sign of frenzy yet, but our eyes are as sharp as eagles. Stay focused and remember this is an official mission to keep to the shadows. Now fan up and report. You got it, Chief. We are clandestine! While well, the guards enthusiastic salute and trot off, Annalisa navigates your group to a stall full of festival foods. I've never seen a turkey like that big. And is that an entire wheel of cheese? Oh, good. I was hoping to find one. Cheese wheels are my favorite Beltane novelty dish. You know cheese is supposed to add to a dish, not be the dish, right? Girl, have you never got a cube of cheese and just ate that? Come on now. You can keep your mass of fertile fermented milk. I'll stick with the turkey's leg. It's more filling than those dainty pastries. Watch your tongue. Those dainty pastries are worth fighting for. Which one do you want to try? Decorative fruit tart. Giant turkey lang. Brand cheese wheel. Eh, I'm gonna go with turkey. Because I never got Thanksgiving. The meat is practically coming off the bone. And that's the best time to have it. 
Better eat it quick. Kate might do it for you. I would not be opposed. Bite into the savory meat. Delicious. Hunter takes a sugar cake from the stall and offers you a bite. A taste for you. How tantalizing. Hunter breaks off a piece of the cake and delicately places it in your mouth. Looks like a sugar cookie. Mmm, thank you. The pleasure's all mine. Look, there's space at the Maypole. At least I got you and your friends to the Maypole in the center of the square. Revelers swirl around the pole, ribbons in hand. A dance? For all of us, the intertwining ribbons symbolize a boon to fer fertility. A boon to my what? Don't think about it, just dance. You each grab a ribbon. When the music starts, you skip around the pole with the other revelers. Half the dancers take a step down and skip to the opposite direction. As the two rotating rows meet, people step under, over, and under, so the ribbons intertwine together. Hunter skips towards you. Under, over, under. Step under. As you step under, Hunter puts an arm through yours, and together you spin around and place like dancers, intertwining ribbons over and over. You stop facing each other out of breath, your lips resting inches apart. Keep the line moving, you two. You both smile at each other before jumping back in line. You continue through the circle until the dance comes to an end. That was fun, even if I might be a little dizzy. After memorizing endless courtly saps, it's nice to have something simple. From across the block, you cheer, hear cheers. Something wonderful must be happening over there. It's the bonfire leap. So as long as a single person leaps the uh, bonfire, the whole town will have good fortune for the following year. And a few burns, if you're not careful. The event is one of my favorites. Who wants to watch it with me? You go ahead. I've got my eye on the stall of exotic wonders. I can uh, remain with Aunt Elisa. We should stay in pairs. Well, that leaves you, Julia. Want to watch a brave soul leap over the fa fires of Beltane with me? I mean, Hunter in this exciting premium to uh, experience a belt and bonfire leap together. Oh, look at the fire behind! Oh! The sparkles around him! Prepare your eyes for a spectacle. Roll a hunter through the streets. And you arrive at a large bonfire in the middle of the square. Any bigger and the flames would touch the stars themselves. I can't believe someone intends to jump over it. It's tradition, and a small price to play, pay to bless the town with a year of prosperity, don't you think? I... like that it brings the community together. I agree, whether you uh, believe the legends or not. A shared celebration is good for the people. Two of you approach the crowd surrounding the large bonfire. They look unsettled by the flame. Somebody has to jump, and it's not gonna be me. Make the cow jump. The cow and a, her farmer stand at the edge of the fire. The cow looks unsettled by the flames. <sighs> Please, Bessie, at least try to make a little leap. We need our blessing of fortune for the year. Perhaps the cow just needs a little encouragement. Bessie? <laughs> You're the most beautiful cow in the world. As he tosses her head, blinking bashfully. I truly mean it. Never have I seen a cow with such splendid, luxurious hide. I can practically see my reflection in your hooves. Do you hear that, Hunter? Is Bessie... Is that Bessie mooing or the sound of 1,000 angels singing? Bessie paws the ground, shaking her head confidently. Go on, jump. What are you, a coward? Says all of you who wouldn't jump over the and bonfire and you're supposed to do instead of the cow. <clears throat> As he lies down on the ground, holding her head indignantly away from the ground. Why would you say that? I thought it was a good line. Will no one attempt to jump over the bonfire? 
The crowd begins to murmur amongst itself. It's obvious that many of these farmers are worried about losing their blessings for the upcoming year. Oh, of course you will. I'll do it. You will? Yeah, because you men are cowards. Growl turns to you with a surprise, and Hunter leans in close to whisper in your ear. But Julia, taking the leap is dangerous. You don't have to do it. I can do this. Well, then I too shall jump with this brave woman. Wait, Hunter, are you... You're the King Regent. It would be irresponsible to attempt such a dangerous feat. It would be even more irresponsible to let you jump alone. Besides, tonight is about putting one's duties aside and enjoying the festivity. Together, you and Hunter hold hands. On three. One. Two. Three. You both sprint towards the bonfire, the heat growing more intense as you draw near. At the edge of the flame, you both leap into the air and sail over the fire. And land safely on the other side, the crowd cheers loudly. We made it. That was exhilarating. By the stars, we of all will have a great year of fortune. Here I, a band begins playing, and the crowd begins dancing in celebration. Hunter turns to you with a smile. Can we join them? My, my, would it be proper for me to dance with the King Regent? Luckily for us, it's Beltane. There are no nobles tonight. Well, then let's dance. Like no one is watching. You and Hunter twirl about, laughing. You stumble slightly, but still enjoy yourself. Forgive me. I'm afraid that I did not have much of a chance to brush up on my footwork as a scribe. As long as you're enjoying yourself, I would not worry about giving the rhythm. As you and Hunter dance, you're struck by the ease and comfort in a smile. Perhaps jumping over the bonfire was truly brought you luck. I have never seen you so relaxed. In truth, I... Uh, it has been a long time since I've been able to feel as free and unburdened as this. Since losing my position, I feel less certain of myself. But you've reminded me that we all have control over our destiny. Sometimes it just takes a leap of faith. Under, your accomplishments don't end here, with or without your position. All you need to do is follow your heart. Life is full of uncertainty but you can always look to your dreams and desires to guide you. You speak wisely, Julia. I thank you for your advice. There has been so much change recently, but it has been hard to keep up my perspective. But when I'm with you, everything suddenly feels right. A wonderful feeling that I share. The night is not over yet. The fireworks will start soon, so we should find a good vantage point. Hunter leads you down a side street, and gradually the heat of the bonfire melts away as you rejoin Caden and Annalisa. I'm glad you both made it back in time. From out of the crowd, Teapot emerges. He leans in close to your ear to deliver his secret reward. No sign of Rinza. Thank you. Teapot, remind me to work on with you on discretion tactics. Since there's been no word of Renza, we can watch the fireworks. We should go before all the good spots are taken. You walk through the stream of revelers gathering for uh, fireworks. As you look around, you notice Annalisa has disappeared from the group. Did anyone see where my sister went to? I thought she was next to you. She was with us. She kind of wandered far. Retrace your steps to a nearby alcove. As you draw near, you hear Annalisa gasp, and you run around the corner and see... Oh. Percival and Annalisa holding each other. Their faces mere inches apart. Upon seeing you, Percival takes a step back. Um, <clears throat> um, Lady Julia, King Regent, Thunder, Ground Show Caden, how oh, lovely to see you all tonight. You as well. We are relieved to find Annalisa in safe hands. I told you, an alcove wasn't secluded enough. 
You're so bad at subterfuge. It's almost adorable. Annalisa. I think he's perfect for you. You do? Who doesn't love a man with a good honor and good stature? And a thick beard. Thick beard, don't forget that. That's quite enough of that. <clears throat> well, Juliana would like to extend my gratitude for saving Annalisa. Her loss would have been a devastating blow to the court. We're all glad for her recovery. It would have been a tragedy if Rins and Cyrus had struck her down, too. Lady Annalisa shared her account of Cyrus and Renza's actions. I was deeply troubled by the allegations of their conduct. It must give no comfort knowing Emery's engaged to Cyrus. It does not. But on Emery's concern, I swore to enjoy tonight and not lose myself to politics. Annalisa runs a hand along Percival's face. If you're looking to enjoy yourself, then perhaps you would come watch the fireworks with me. Um, uh, yes, uh, well, uh, you're... I have to forgive me, I, I should not mingle too much. No matter my obligations, know that I have nothing but my deepest respect for you, Lady Julia. I hope you can understand. Percival bows and walks away. Of all nights, to be fair and impartial, the lovable oath chose tonight. There goes my Beltane kiss. Not necessarily. But you heard what he said. It's inappropriate to continue seeing each other tonight. Inappropriate to be with you, but if you were someone else, like a young country girl swept off her feet by a strapping noble. That was the plot in the romance novel, Chapter 5 of The Last Dance. I wish I could experience love like that with him. Like when Fabian gives e Eleanor a bouquet of flowers, defends her from a rogue, then rides away on horseback. I swoon every time. What if we made that happen for you? Recreating that scene would be possible with a little help, which you have, of course. I can't say this is what I was expecting tonight, but I would gladly join in. Do you really think we could pull it off? And before Diamond Choice, do this exclusive premiere to help your sister experience the Beltane kiss she's always wanted. Here's her the Beltane kiss on second thought. Forget I said anything. I do. Hell, I'm unsure if this will even work, but I'm willing to try anything to get through his th his stern skull. I guess he's thick, but yeah, sure. We'll break through. There is clearly something between you and Percival. And truly, I must know. When did this start? Why him? How far has this gone? When did this start? It all began at the Masquerade Ball. We spent a magical evening dancing together and getting to know each other. Julia was something like out of my romance novels. One thing is for certain, at least, you can are clearly smitten with him. I've just never felt this way about someone before. Don't worry, sister. I will make sure you get your Beltane kiss tonight. Hunter, I need you to wait by the Royal Gardens. Caden, hide out in an alley on the roots away from there. Lucky me, I can hide in the shadows while the young hunter frolics in the gardens. I believe we want Annalise and Percival to be the ones frolicking. Indeed, Annalisa, if you could wait outside the gardens, I will convince Percival, Percival to escort you. Wait, won't Percival recognize me? Not if you wore a mask. Okay, sure. Her whole outfit's still the same, her hair is still the same, but a mask will surely help. <laughs> Guys aren't that idiot. Caden produces a mask for Annalisa. She puts it on. I bought these in case we needed them when breaking into the Pharaoh estate. Oh, yes, clearly. Where did Annalisa go? <laughs> mm, that's brilliant. Let's make the romance happen. The group separates and takes their places. Soon after, you track down Percival at a tavern. He stares forlornly at the happy revelers. There you are, my lord. Lady Julie, I must apologize for my behavior with your sister. Uh, it was extremely inappropriate and indecorous. 
Lord Percival, I value my sister's happiness more than the decorum. If the two of you are happy together, then you have my full support. I appreciate your understanding. I have been emotionally torn over the proper course of action. On one hand lies propriety, and on the other... <clears throat> well, um, yes, uh, very... Lord Percival, you can trust me. Right. On the other hand, I remember the night of the masquerade. The, um, how the moon traced the elegant curve of her cheek and the scent of flylax wafted gently from her silken hair. That's incredibly romantic. Does Annalisa know how much that night meant to you? Alas, despite the way that uh, she tugs upon my heart, I am at a loss for how to proceed. Why don't you... Tell her, make an excuse to see her, shower her in gifts. Just tell her how you feel. What? I cannot simply come out and just say it. I care for your sister very much, but I fear that social obligations prevent me from pursuing my feelings for her. You say you were to come upon someone that looked like Annalisa, but nobody could say for sure. In fact, I saw a beautiful masked woman matching that description. She appears to be waiting for someone just down the road. I am not interested in masked women. My heart belongs to Lady Annalisa. The masked woman bears a striking resemblance to Annalisa, and she's in need of help. Is that so? Well, my honor cannot let me abandon someone in need. I will walk with her, but I shall think of only Lady Annalisa the whole time. You sigh and shake your head as he wanders off, and you rush ahead to enact your plan. Meet Hunter at the gates of the Royal Gardens. Annalisa and Percival are on their way. Let's hide inside the garden. It may be an issue. The guard refuses to unlock the gate. But you're the King Regent. Yes, well, it seems that he doesn't recognize me. He thinks I'm a reveler trying to sneak into the gardens. Perhaps I can help change his mind. Come, let's speak to him together. Do you approach the guard? He crinkles his nose as you draw closer. You're back again? I thought I told you to vacate the premises. I must ask you to unlock this gate. As I told you, old friend, my duty does not permit me to open the royal gardens to unauthorized visitors. You must unlock the gate because... Caden ordered it. Ugh, the whole chain of command has fallen apart since Teapot and his band of misfits has taken the night off. If Caden wishes it, then I shall open it because I care about my duties. The guard unlocks the gate and steps aside. As just as Annalise and Percival come in aside, you and Hunter slip into the garden and hide behind a shrub. The Royal Gardens, we must take a look. Unfortunately, there that won't be possible. The gardens are off limits. What are you talking about? The gate is open. Come, let us go in. She grabs Percival's hand and pulls him through the gate before he can object. The couple strolls among the rows of flowers. Annalisa glows while Percival shuffles stiffly after her. This is beautiful. Oh my lord, won't you pick me a rose? Certainly not. Disturbing the royal garden is a crime with a penalty of up to three years of imprisonment. Oh, all right then. No, Percival, the opportunity is right in front of you. Is he really so unaware? Furthermore, I believe that such beauty is best enjoyed in the natural state. Plucked by human hands, a flower would wither and die within days. Fair. But is this truly a natural state if it is in a manicured garden? Well, that is... Ah, interesting. Um, observa... Thank you! Regardless of the garden's naturalness, we, we must leave, my lady, or at least my allergies get the best of me. Oh, I did not realize. Let us leave, then. They hurry back to the garden, and you exchange a worried look with Hunter. I admire his per honesty, but he needs a few lessons in flirtations. Hey, 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 Are you gonna get glasses? Shut up. But hopefully he will take the hint before the night is over. You had better find Caden to get ready for part two. You take a shortcut to the spot where you told Caden to wait for you. Before long, you hear Annalise and Percival's voice drawing closer. They're coming, Caden. I need you to insult my sister. And bait Percival into a fine. 
Exactly. Percival will have to defend her honor. He'll look like a hero. Caden puts on his mask and lets out a sigh. Oh, okay, you know your sister the best. Do you have an insult in mind? Tell her about the mole on her thigh. Oh god. If you think that will do the trick. Just then, and Lisa and Percival come into sight. Caden saunters up to the approaching duo, sneering smugly like a drunken noble. Good evening, may I help you? I think it's you who needs help. That lady you're walking with has a dark secret. She harbors a mole on her thigh. <laughs> God, Caden, you're crap at the... How would you even know about that? He looks imploringly at Percival, but you're surprised. He sadly shakes his head and places a hand on Caden's shoulder. My friend, please, what troubles you so that you feel the need to belittle others? I... Shouldn't you be mad? I am hurt, but I am not angry with you. I wish for you to find peace within your own self that will enable you to treat others with respect. But you should... And then we... This was a mistake. Caden shuffles away as a bear's face scrunched in confusion. That poor soul. He is surely reflecting on his life choices. My lord, that was very compassionate way to handle the situation. This basically, I think, the, I think I know what Pixelberry is going for here. And all these women, anyone watching right now, actually, because some of you are guilty of it. Like you, you read these love romances and you know just crap, and then you think that's how it all should be, and it really never pans out, does it? You know, it never does. That's because it doesn't exist. It it really can, unless you literally, it's like a skit. And this guy isn't even in on the skit. So, yeah. I'm not the type to jump to fights or start duels. I believe that talking through our feelings should be the first way to resolve conflict. You can do your strolling, you slip down the side street to get ahead of them. The Percival, this is your last chance. I need you and Annalisa to ride off into the night. First, I need a horse. And the crowd spot horse as you approach, you recognize a familiar person holding the reins, head slumped forlornly. Excuse me, could I borrow? Ah, oh, it's you. Lady Julia, I am sorry to be discourteous, but I would ask that you do not disturb me at this moment. But if I could just borrow your... You see, I have decided to compile a book of my wisest musings, but my mind has gone completely blank. Until I find my philosophical news, I, I will not be able to focus on anything else. If I help sue, sow seeds of wisdom in the fertile fields of your mind, will you hear me out? It's important. Your efforts would be rewarded. Have you ever wondered what underwater smells like? Are things on fire, or is fire on things? What if there were no hypothetical questions? Oh, God. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go with fire. Emery stares on in the distance, her gaze far away. Gradually, her lips curl to a smile. Lady Julia, this is perfect. It is almost par with, on par with something I could not have thought of myself. Now, what were you saying? Um, I was wondering if I could just borrow your horse. Your brother and my sister have grown quite fond of each other, and I'm trying to arrange in a romantic evening for... Ray holds up a hand to cut you off, smiling sadly. I understand entirely. My earlier rejection has led you to help others achieve love where you could not. It is part of your healing process. That is not... Please know that I carry the burden of your broken heart wherever I go, helping you with the objectives the least I can do. My stallion should be the perfect steed to the din, your wisest horse in the kingdom. Isn't that so, Clarity? Emery slaps Clarity fondly on the hind quarters, and the he whines, immediately bolting in the direction of Annalise and Percival, who are just rounding the corner. Ah! My lady, look out! Percival sweeps Annalisa to Clarity's path, pulling her tightly in his arms. You rush over in horror. Annalisa, are you alright? You call that riding away on a horseback? I could have died! Lady Annalisa, but I thought... Oh, this entire affair has gotten off track. This is nothing like the chapter 5 of the last dance. 
I know, things didn't go... It's just like chapter 12. Oh god, help me. That's good? Whatever are you talking about? My lord Percival, shut up and kiss me. Percival hesitates for a moment before leaning in. Annalisa aggressively holds Percival's lips against hers. I'm glad it all worked out. <laughs> Somehow, you definitely slink away, slightly confused, but happy for your sister. You, Hunter, and Caden meet up at a park. So did either of them recover. Nothing went according to plan, but somehow they, they're they still kissing so aggressively. Well, then it worked out in the end. It's by Frisk in the crowd, tailing a woman with a shining diamond ring. Frisk. Hmm, I wouldn't do anything else, would it? Uh-huh, anything to report? So you know how to friends, I'll uh, continue looking out for her, and no one else. Frisk takes a long, last look at the woman with the ring before disappearing into the crowd. I believe we're due for the fireworks show next. Looking around, you watch Cordonians fill the square, many people holding hands. I didn't know so many people would gather in one spot. Traditionally, people gather around bonfires, but now the fireworks tend to draw the largest crowds. The area here is a bit crowded. I will have uh, a better vantage by the steps. He nods to you and then walks away, leaving you and Hunter alone. Oh, there he is. With the other's gone, Hunter leans over, longing in his eyes you haven't seen all day. You said you couldn't focus on our kiss at the time, but waiting for your verdict has consumed my thoughts. Please give it to me now. Let us slay our affection bare beneath the fires of Beltane. The fireworks go off, lighting the night sky with a spectrum of colors. Hunter smiles at you and showing a deep vulnerability, begging for a release. Julia. Mmm, passionately. Grasp back of Hunter's head, presses lips against yours as he tightly embraces you. Have our affections been laid bare enough for you? We would need until the end of time for my affection to be wholly expressed. If I only have this moment, I will use it to say that you mean the world to me, Julia. I would stand by you through anything. So would I, even if the world itself were to fall apart. The last of the fireworks light up the night sky. Hunter parts from you and stares deeply into your eyes. A huge grin stretch across his face. Annalisa calls out to you as she and Caden find you among the crowd. That was a spectacular show. You were too busy to kissing to even see it. I can assume the same of you. It's a moment none of us would forget. Hunter sneaks a smirking glance at you, and then you hear the sounds of armor clanking. Turning around, you see Teapot, Sunshine, and Frisk. We located Forenza at the Fero Estate and posted a guard to watch her, which is why we thought it'd be a good time to celebrate our favorite Beltane tradition. Not tonight. You said you wouldn't. Hi, Chief. We lied. Happy birthday! Oh, God. Teapot throws an arm around Caden, who looks to the ground exasperated. It's Caden's birthday? Why didn't you tell me? I don't want to make a big fuss of it. Besides, we have more important things to focus on today. Nothing's more important to us than you, Chief. Eh, you should have told us, Caden. I could have prepared a gift for you. I prefer not to make a commotion out of it. But the people who care about you do. That includes Lady Julia, does it not? And her sister, his regency. I know what you want to suggest, but no, we shouldn't be celebrating or having a celebration anyway. We have a job to do. Come on. Only so often do we get to show how much we appreciate you. Julia, talk some sense into him. We're on a mission for you, Julia. It's your call. Celebrate Kane's birthday with your friends in this exclusive scene. It's a scene, not premium. It's weird how all of a sudden they're calling it premiums now. Premium! 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 A party won't hurt the mission. Yes! Come on, everyone. We know just where to go. The guard lead everyone through the streets until you reach... The tavern. The group really has a preferred spot for unwinding. 
Every guard knows the location of every tavern, which ones are dangerous to walk into, which ones are good information, and which ones are good for a party. Happy birthday! Oh my god, will you stop it? Oh, he's a very good Okay, and smiles, the sunshine breaks in a song, and the others join in, peppering their praises between verses. Happy birthday to our dearest friend! That's you! Our love for you shall never end. To our fearless leader, today is Caden's day to shine. You're so clever. And smirks, cocking an eyebrow. And we'll cherish you for all of time. Group breaks out in cheers and applause while Caden grins bashfully. Thank you, everyone. This means a lot, even if I'm dying from embarrassment. And want to run out that door right now. <laughs> Someone find the uh, Medicus. We can't let him pass so early in the night. He says he's dying every year, but he's still with us. Though time has flown, the memories we've made will last forever. Remember when you hid me in a barrel? The time you almost beat Sunshine in a drinking contest? Or the impromptu opera debut with Teapot? Game chuckles and turns to you. Forgive us, Lady Julia. Recounting memories will leave you out of the conversation. That's all right. You clearly have a storied history together. I want to hear about the drinking contest, hiding Frisk in a barrel, teapot opera skills. Frisk in a barrel. As you might expect, Frisk was avoiding an angry husband. Except this one was a very powerful visiting noble. I was on patrol in the market when Frisk came rushing around the corner looking for a place to hide. The closest option was a cart carrying a barrel of fish. No, don't tell me you hit him in there. That's not even the best part. No sooner than I helped him in one of the barrels, the cart departed for Stormhold. Dark workers who pulled me out several hours later were skeptical that I was a customs inspector completing my survey of the goods. But they let me go in the end. They probably didn't want to endure your stench any longer. You smell like fish for weeks. Enough reminiscing. We have a very important birthday tradition to attend. Sunshine leads everyone outside the tavern and in the nearest park. It's time to read our futures in the Nightsbane. Wait, I'm right about Nightsbane. There's a legend that the color of the blossom will reveal your fortune for the next year. Exactly. I will have to just know what's in store for us all. Sunshine leads you into a nearby bush, and everyone picks their flowers, holding them up to the moonlight. They begin to unfurl, revealing the colors within. Mm, green. Prosperity, right? That's a good one. Mine is orange, which means change. Oh, Sunshine, if you're no good ever comes from your transformations. What? Are you saying I should never change? I mean, just, you're perfect the way you are. Oh, my flowers red. Another year of danger. When will my fortune never show love? Bubble tranquility. I don't understand. I'm a bastion of peace and calm. What about you, Lady Julian? Flowers white, blue, yellow. I'm gonna go with blue. Very fortunate. You'll experience an increase in status. Enough fortunes! Let's say we move back to the tavern and play some real potty games. Oh, Frisk, no respect for tradition. Still, I wouldn't say no to a nice cold ale. Why don't you all go on ahead? I'd like to uh, take a quick walk and clear my head first. Julia, would you care to join me? It would be my pleasure. You and Gagan stroll along the streets and feel a, a quiet sense of peace wash over you despite the bustle of the festival. Lady Julia, thank you for coming. It's nice to celebrate with another friendly face. Think nothing of it, Caden. You deserve to have a night where you feel special. Truthfully, I've never been one for birthdays. It was Sunshine and the others who started celebrating mine for me. This may have been the biggest celebration yet. Really? What's your happiest birthday memory? Other than tonight, I suppose it was the first birthday party the other guards threw for me. I had to work a shift that night, and they surprised me with a cake. They pulled their wages to buy the ingredients. Incredibly thoughtful of them. 
Thoughtful was the only word to describe the cake because it tasted terrible. They did not make the for good bakers. Still, I was grateful. Suddenly, Frisk bursts around the corner, panting and out of breath. Oh, be freely, Julia. You must come quickly. What is it? Is there a threat to King Regent? No, but Sunshine won the drinking game, and now Teapot is doing his best to save the tavern. Kane's face twists into an expression somewhere between exasperation and bemusement, and the two of you follow Frisk back to the tavern. Back at the tavern, you find Teapot carrying out a sleeping sunshine. His arms are bruised. Ah, that was a close one. Luckily, she tired herself out before she bashed in my skull. My goodness. Take her back to the barracks. She needs rest. As Teapot nods, a guard runs up to the group. Chief, Rinza has vacated her home. Now is the time to initiate the operation. Good work. We'll take it from here. The way the people are walking into my home will look suspicious. I'll return home and make sure Zaya stays put and doesn't interfere. Good luck. The guard salutes Caden and Hunter and disperses. Annalisa heads towards your home and you, Hunter, and Caden proceed to the Pharaoh estate. Hunter lets you into the foyer. The Regency, welcome home. Lady Rinza is out right now. She will return later to accept the Rosario representative's surrender. Wow, it's like he's an answering machine. My surrender. I mean, yes, our surrender. It's a shame Rinza isn't here, but as Victor, it's her right to enjoy herself. In the meantime, I will show our guests the glory of the Pharaoh State. Just what I've always wanted to see. Of course, your Regency, carry on. You and Hunter nod to the squire before proceeding upstairs. The painting of apples was in here. Searching through the room, you find the painting hanging where you last saw it. Got it. The painting looks so harmless. I wonder what's in, so important about it. You can investigate later. Let's get out of here. You descend into the foyer with the painting, and the front door swings open, and Rinza and Nurse. Carlo, bring me up wine to my standard. The vintage I packed isn't to my taste. Shall I procure some from our, uh, our guest? The representative of House Rosario has arrived ahead of schedule. So soon, but I told Zaya. Renza finishes taking off her coat and turns directly to you, eyeing the painting in your hands. I see Zaya betrayed our trust. You betrayed this house and everyone in it, including me. Dear Hunter, don't be upset. It wasn't personal. Please have a seat. Your guests of the future, Pharaoh, I had out now. Hunter dangles a Pharaoh's son pendant in front of Renza. Your lack of house charm indicates otherwise. A minor loss, one to be recouped shortly. Mm, yep, we're doing this. Without a word, you close the distance between you and Renza and smack her across the face. <gasps> How dare you! Greta, calm down. That's for me, and this is for my sister. Renza catches your hand before you can slap her again. She squeezes your wrist hard in anger. Do not think you can strike me twice and get away with it. Hayden pulls you back to the group. I will tighten my grip around your house until it crumbles within my grasp. Your hold over House Rosario ends tonight. We'll see about that. Carlo sees them. That painting is not to leave this house. Carlo looks between Hunter and Renza in fear and confusion. He tepidly draws his sword. You dare raise a blade against the King Regent of Cordonia. Kane steps in front of you and Hunter raising his fists. Try it. Carlo, Renz is using you. You don't need to do this. I took an oath to House Ferrero. I have to. They're unarmed. Get them. Yep. Because mm -hmm. that stops people from beating people with swords or guns. Sadness flashes across his eyes. Carlo runs at Caden and strikes at him with the pummel of a sword. Caden pivots to the side, grabbing Carlo's arm as it swings past him. Using Carlo's momentum, he kicks under his legs and spins. Sends Carlo flying, or ripping the sword from his hands as he falls. Caden holds a blade at Carlo's throat. 
Do not threaten the King Region again. Thank you for contributing to the Rosario Art Collection, Renza. Don't try to come after us. I'm not the one you should be worried about. Without anyone in your way, you, Hunter, and Caden escape the house and across the city to your estate. Julia, you made it! We were successful. Successful in what? With your games, Annalisa, I told you. I've made up my mind. On Zaya, I want answers. Why would you sell out the house over this? Josiah the painting, she looks at it in shock before desperately grabbing the edge of the frame. Give me that. You don't know what you have. Loose, my grim. Zaya rips the painting from your hands and goes tumbling backwards. The frame crashes onto the floor and snaps off. The print of the apple falls out, revealing a second image. You all stare in shock at the painting underneath the still life. Zaya turns red. Is that a painting of you, Aunt Zaya? You're so fit? And so, so nude. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what? Like, I don't get it. It's a picture of her. It's a painting, actually, of her being naked. But, all right, whatever. Hunter and Hayden avert their eyes respectfully. And Lisa steps forward to examine the suggestive painting of your Aunt Zaya posing naked on a lounging sofa. Damn, Aunt Zaya. I can see every detail. Is that the house flower in your mouth? It's quite provocative. Stop looking at this instant, or you'll wish a fox had gouged out your eyes instead. When did this happen? A foolish commission done in my youth was uh, with a past lover. The Warstraw would have sold it to pay off his debts. It's bad. But you were willing to sell out our entire house for this? You don't understand. The court always has its eyes on you. A simple, a single humiliation can turn you into a laughingstock forever. And now it will never, thanks to me. Hold on. Everyone should see this. Anzaya, you have assets here. And there's nothing but shame. With the opposite. Sensual, smoldering, perky. You have much to be proud of. Let's hang it here in the foyer. I barely tolerate the near naked man in the corner. We should paint it over, destroy it. We will proudly display it. You'll look amazing and should own it. And be proud of it, whatever others may think. I I do like the way the light catches my features. Maybe it's not as shameful as I thought. I okay, you know this would never pass in this day and era. Like, I'm talking about this day and era. This wouldn't even pass in this day and era, let alone theirs. That settles it. The painting shall hang in place of honor for all of our guests to see. Oh my lord. Destroy it. Destroy it. We should at least put it in the back room. Front and center. Now, it is time we discuss the future of House Rosario. Indeed it is. As I have said before, I support Julia as head of house. As do I. The group turns expectantly to Zaya. I cannot believe I'm saying this, Julia. You've proven yourself just as clever as any Rosario. I have no choice but to give you my support as head of the house. And Lisa wraps you into a hug. Julia, you're the head of house now! Yay, I did it. Never in my wildest dreams did I think this could happen. Thank you, everyone. You notice the enthusiasm in my voice? Yay, we did it. Yeah. Even with a capable leader, it's still going to be a long road to the throne. And something tells me many books. But we still... We will take the first step when I announce my bid at the carnival tomorrow. Once everyone sees her, they will come to believe in her as we have. Oh, boy, I just had to see it. Anyone who thinks otherwise is foolish. Just then you hear a growing commotion outside. Within the moments, Vasco runs into the room. Your ladyship, the carnival grounds are on fire, and it's spreading. You rush outside. We find your carnival grounds are lit. Organize everyone into rotations. We can get the fire to the fire, or the water to the fire faster. They still need all the help they can get. Caden with me. Under Caden, jump to the forming fire fighting rotation. 
They fill buckets up with water and hand them to others to throw on the fires. Animals flee around the servants, carrying buckets and disappearing into the city. Through the smoke, you see a figure fleeing into the forest. Where you can chase after him, you hear Star Fox cry out. Behind you, Star Fox tries to free the tiger from its cage as the fire closes around them. Star Fox. Run into the burning campgrounds and reach the Tiger King. The keys lie on the ground, but it's burning hot from the fire. The keys burn against your hand, but you manage to unlock it. The door swings open and the tiger runs into the city. Ooh. Yeah. Don't scare me like that, Star Fox. Come on, we need to go. Look out! Looking up, you see Hunter and Caden running towards you and pointing behind you. You turn to see the tent collapsing from above. Before you can react, the tent collapses on you and Star Fox, burning red embers engulf your body. Julia! You've been consumed by the fire. Will you survive? Found in the next... Of course we are! Shut up! No, they're going to end the book right here, right now! That was it! Our only hope! The one and only Julia is now dead. No! No! Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And now description below, links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support yours truly. It's very much appreciated. Also, consider hitting that uh, join. You know, being a part of Locums Locos. And hey, guess what? You should also, uh, you know, make sure to hit that bell so you receive notifications. So, without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.